Hi, my name is Brandon Fisher, and I work at TI with temperature and humidity sensors. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to integrate the LMT01 integrated circuit temperature sensor with Arduino using the Arduino Uno's internal comparator. In this video, we will begin with a general overview of the LMT01 sensor, including its features and its unique digital pulse train output. Then we will discuss the capabilities and configuration of the comparator included with the MCU on the Arduino Uno being used today. Next, we will talk about how to use interrupts and interrupt service routines to count the pulses being output by the LMT01. Then I will show you a quick demonstration wherein the LMT01 outputs both the pulse count and corresponding temperature output to an LCD display. Finally, we will walk through the code step by step so that you can understand what each line is doing and how it can be modified to suit the needs of your project. The LMT01 is a two pin digital output temperature sensor. The device has an accuracy of 0.5 degrees C from negative 20 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Celsius, but can operate from negative 50 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius with only slightly reduced accuracy. Because the LMT01 is in a two lead TO92 package, it is very easy to include in breadboarded projects or for any project where soldering of surface mount components may be impractical or undesirable. The LMT01 has a current pulse train output. In order to convert that data to a temperature, we need to count the number of pulses and perform some simple algebra. The equation shown describes the relationship between the number of pulses and the temperature reading of the device. Because these pulses are current based, it is necessary to include some additional circuitry in order to produce a voltage that is readable by the Arduino Uno. There are two ways to convert this pulse train. One is with a level shifter, by including a BJT in a pull up or pull down resistor, the current output can be converted to a pulse train which goes between ground and the rail voltage. We won't be using this method today, but several examples of this are shown in the LMT01 datasheet if you'd like to see it in more detail. The second option is to use a comparator, and because the Arduino Uno has a built-in comparator, we'll be using this method. It requires much less external circuitry, and only an external resistor is necessary to convert the current output to a voltage. The layout for the demonstration today will be similar to the images shown on this slide. We will connect a 5 volt pin on the Arduino to VP on the LMT01, and pin A1 will be connected to pin VN which will have roughly 13.4 kilo ohms of resistance leading to ground. This value of resistance was selected because it was convenient and because it will create an output voltage between 0.46 and 1.68 volts when the output of the LMT01 is low or high respectively. These values are sufficiently above and below our reference voltage of 1.1 volts. Now these voltages can be calculated using Ohm's law and the knowledge that the typical low current of the LMT01 is 34 microamps and the typical high current of the LMT01 is 125 microamps. If this value of resistance is not convenient for you, values between 12K and 16K should work for the setup used in the demonstration today. If you'd like, you can also use an external reference voltage instead of the Arduino Uno's internal 1.1 volt reference voltage. This would also change the value of the resistor needed. By the end of this video, the steps needed for switching to an external reference voltage will have been made clear. The image on the left hand of this slide is taken from the ATmega328P datasheet and shows the connection of the analog comparator built into the Arduino Uno being used today. As shown in the diagram, we can connect to the comparator using pins A0 and A1. A1 will be connected to the VN pin of the LMT01, and A0 will be connected to the internal reference voltage of the Arduino Uno, which happens to be 1.1 volts. When the pulse train appearing on pin A1 is less than the reference voltage attached to pin A0, the output of the comparator will go to VCC. When pin A1 is greater than the reference voltage, the output of the comparator goes to system ground. This creates an inverted pulse train that now has the correct logic level for the Arduino Uno. This inverted pulse train will be possible for the Arduino Uno to count. Now in order to properly configure the analog comparator to perform as we want, we will need to modify the contents of the ACSR register. This type of operation is typical when trying to tell an MCU precisely how to perform an operation. And if you can understand how we control the comparator of the AT Mega today, you will be able to use and understand more powerful MCUs such as the MSP432. Additionally, you can begin looking through the libraries included with the Arduino IDE to understand how functions such as analog read are implemented. Knowing how these functions work can be helpful when you need to configure peripherals to behave in a very specific way for any unusual projects you may decide to take on. The image on the top right of this slide shows the contents of the ACSR configuration register, and the table below that describes the function of each bit in that register. Now all of these bits are described in more detail in the data sheet for the ATmega328P. You should feel free to pause the video now if you would like to read through this table, but this register will be discussed more when we step through the software used in the demonstration. Now the most important thing we'll need to understand to successfully count the pulses from the LMT01 is the use of interrupts and interrupt service routines. 
An interrupt in the context of processors and MCUs refers to a flag or signal that tells the controller that something important has occurred and needs to immediately be handled. Now, processors and MCUs will have many different interrupts, and the way they are prioritized can be fairly complicated and varies by machine. But what we need to understand for the project today is that any code attached to an interrupt will be given a higher priority than other processes, including the rest of our code. An interrupt service routine, or an ISR, refers to a segment of code that is associated with a given interrupt. These are similar to functions, but do not return values, nor do they take any arguments. To count pulses with the Arduino, it is not good enough to simply connect the output of the LMT01 to an input pin and try to periodically read the signal. We must count the edges of the pulse train as they come in order to ensure that none are missed. To accomplish this, we will have to create an ISR that is triggered by an edge of the analog comparator interrupt. This interrupt can be enabled with bit 3 in the ACSR register. So what we want is for that every time the LMT01 pulses upwards, and the comparator produces a corresponding falling edge, the ISR increments a counting variable. This is an ideal operation for an interrupter trigger because it is short and simple. Having ISR which are too long or too frequent can cause the execution of your main body of code to slow significantly. The LCD in this video is set up to display both the pulse count from the Arduino and the temperature reading. As you can see, the LMT01 is correctly returning a room temperature of around 24C. If I place my finger on the device like so, you'll notice I can drive the temperature reading gradually up to around 27.6C. I can return the device to reading the ambient temperature by removing my finger. Although the LMT01 and Arduino are very close in this demonstration, if there's a specific device you want to monitor the temperature of using the LMT01, you can treat the device as a two-wire temperature probe with an acceptable wire length of up to two meters. The schematic for this setup is included in the video description, and in just a moment I will take you through the software that is loaded onto the Arduino in order to read from the LMT01. Now we will step through the sketch that was loaded onto the Arduino during the previous demonstration. If you'd like to repeat this demonstration or reuse the software for your own project, a link to this code will be included in the video description. Prior to the setup block, we include the liquidcrystal.h library and declare the necessary global variables for our program. Note that the variable pulse count, which is being used to hold our continuously updating count of pulses from the LMT01, must be declared as volatile. Using the keyword volatile lets the compiler know that this variable can update at any time, even when not used in the surrounding code. This is necessary because the pulse count variable will be incremented out of order by the ISR. Inside the setup block, we initialize our LCD and print the temp and pulse labels that you saw in the demonstration included in the last slide. Next, we set the ACSR register to configure the analog comparator to the settings we need. This means we enable the 1.1 volt internal reference, enable the comparator interrupt, and set the interrupt to trigger on the falling edge of the pulse train input. Inside the loop block, we begin by checking to see if we are currently counting any pulses. This may not seem necessary, but because the pulses happen roughly 100 times slower than the clock speed of the Arduino Uno, it is necessary to ensure that this display does not continuously override itself with zeros. The while loop nested inside the if statement pauses so that the entire pulse train can be read. Once we receive the same reading two samples in a row, we exit the while loop and print out the pulse count to the LCD display. Using the pulse count, we calculate and print out the temperature as well. Finally, we reset the pulse count to zero and restart the loop after a brief delay. Now while the loop is running, the ISR triggered by the analog comparator interrupt is continuously being called to update the pulse count. Because the ISR has a higher priority than the code inside the loop block, the while loop that compares pulse count to the hold variable updates continuously and eventually ends. This concludes our demonstration on how to use the LMT01 pulse train temperature sensor with the Arduino. The schematic and example software, as well as the data sheet for the LMT01, will be included in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like to see another kind of digital temperature sensor in action, be sure to check out our video on using the TMP102 with the Arduino platform over I2C. Also, be sure to keep an eye out for future videos on utilizing the TI sensor library with Arduino.